mother will be concerned. Any father will be bothered. Why my baby is not growing? I mean, if your baby is at uh, nine months or ten months at uh, this stage, is a concern. Now, I've got a feeling that even God gets concerned when believers are not growing in him. And that's why we're talking about prayer school as a mechanism for us to grow. Let me say this, however, that none of us can say I've now graduated in discipleship. It is a continuous walk with God. It is a continuous walk with Christ. When somebody says, I know it all about the Bible, I know it all about God, that one is a false prophet. You better crucify him upside down. And I will help you in that one. Now, God gets concerned when believers are not growing. Let me say this about babies. Something maybe you may dispute, but let me say it. I want to believe that all babies have two major characteristics. Number one, number one, babies cannot help themselves. Yes, why? They are undeveloped in everything. They have no capacity to help, uh, anyway, to help themselves. And number two, just like number one, babies cannot help others. Still spiritual maturity. This is why you find in church where believers, pastor, come and pray for me. Yes, we'll pray for you. But you cannot be a prayer item all the time. Tired and sick of immature believers. We need to grow up and shine for Christ and make a difference. That instead of being helped, we help others. That's why we're going, we're going to go to the church. And I will tell you that I don't want to pass the church that is spiritually immature. That's why we're labeling. That's why we're doing all this to make sure that we all grow together to know Christ Jesus our Lord. Now, matters become worse when both the pastors and the church leaders are immature and even the congregation also are immature. Who? Oh, so who is carrying who? It's babies carrying babies. Babies producing more babies and babies producing more and more babies. How far does that go? How far? And unfortunately, this is what we are seeing today in our nation. Leaders, spiritual leaders in diapers. Congregation who are supposed to be growing up but they are babies in Christ Jesus. Throwing tantrums and screaming and all that. Anything comes up, you see spiritual immaturity. May the Lord help us that even as we, 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 we seek to be blessed of the Lord, we grow and begin to behave differently like mature adults in Christ Jesus. You and I know very well that in the physical, there are things we can allow babies to do, but not accept for adults to do because they are adults. Likewise, in the realm of the spirit, we need to grow to the level that when we speak, when we choose to hear or to contemplate on our hearts, we are doing all the things as mature believers. Born again, spirit filled, blood washed, we are mature Christians. And unfortunately, when trouble comes our way as believers, that's, that's when you see spiritual immaturity. Asking all those questions and all that, yes, in the natural, yes, but where is our spiritual growth? What makes us different from all the other people in there? When I was beginning minister work, one of my first theological training I did was by a gentleman called Dennis K. Mock. And this man authored a book called Personal Spiritual Life. And this is what he said. He said, just as it takes time, look at the word, energy and right nourishment for a baby to mature physically into an adult, the same is true of the process of growing from spiritual infancy to spiritual maturity, which is discipleship. He's saying it's a process growing from spiritual infancy if a believer is the same uh, you know being born again for five years he doing the things of a six year old there's a problem but we're talking about a process which won't be easy in a way of growing from spiritual infancy 
to spiritual maturity. Tell your neighbor, I want to grow. I want to grow and become a person of responsibility in the church. So he, go, he went on to highlight uh, about what's happening in the world, about false concepts of spiritual uh, life. They say it's about self-reformation. And they argue that people just need to be better and do better in my own strength to gain spiritual maturity. Uh, and, and then they quote, okay, they misquote Romans 7, 14 and the rest of it. And then he says the other false concept is the so-called annihilation of all the sin nature. That the old sin nature has been completely eradicated or destroyed. And then they quote these ones. Now, all these are false way of looking at spiritual ma maturity. But he says something more that spiritual life or discipleship is the lifelong process for a believer in Christ of growing up and maturing in our relationship with God by living in the power of the indwelling Holy Spirit. In other words, it is a deliberate journey. Hey, if I trip go to Mombasa and you know nothing about it, you just show up and sit in your house. Yes? Will you get to Mombasa? No, you will not. And unfortunately, that's what the church is battling from. Laziness. We sit back for our hands and say, it will happen. By luck, by chance? No chance. We must be deliberate. We'll talk about our spiritual growth to know the Lord, our Savior. It's a journey. 